because my mother was also a great skier and she took me to the races where she uh, participated and I met some of those people. So we had a lot of memories about wonderful excursions and whatnot and we thought that it was quite possible that sometime or another we were on the same mountain on the same day skiing but we never met at that time. Let me add something which uh, I've said before, but I think it's important. From my point of view, Heinz has made three momentous contributions to our thinking about knowledge and about science. The first one of these was his rediscovery of Johannes Müller's principle of undifferentiated coding. What that principle says is that the neural signals that are generated by our sense organs and sent to the cortex are all qualitatively the same. They only vary in intensity. As Heinz put it, he said our senses tell us how much but they never tell us what. That, as I say, it's been known since about 1845 or something when Johannes Miller wrote it for the first time. Psychologists know about it, but yet any course on perception will talk about information coming in from the outside to the inside. What the principle of undifferentiated coding means is that it is we who generate the qualities out of which our experiential world is built up. And these qualities are our invention on the basis of quantitative differences. And the qualities tell us nothing. They contain no information about qualities outside. Now that it's, it's, a, it's a fundamental insight. From this insight derives the realization that, as Heinz said, objectivity is the delusion that observations could be made without an observer, which is a beautiful way of saying it. And the moment you have realized what it means, any form of realism is beyond, it's out of bounds. It's just not possible. Because the statement of the illusion of objectivity is incontrovertible. If you observe something, you are the observer, you have contributed to it, you have built it up in observing. And the third contribution is the one that causes the most profound resistance against constructivism. And it also derives from the two, two earlier ones. Because it simply says, if it is you who constructs your way of thinking, who constructs your experiential world and your ways of dealing with it, then you are responsible for what you do and for what you think. And that is intensely disagreeable. It's disagreeable in, in very many ways. And that is why I think other theories are far more popular if you can somehow blame your genes or if you can blame your upbringing or if you can blame I don't know what. It's more comfortable. You, you shelve the responsibility. Whereas if you do believe that you've constructed it yourself, you are responsible. And that does not mean that you are free to act in any way whatever, because you are always hemmed in by the constraints that you encounter. But within those constraints you make choices. And those choices are and remain your responsibility. So I think these three, three things are enormously important for anyone.